<laughs> it's me back for another video about objects and classes and stuff using JavaScript and P5.js. So one of the things that I get asked all the time, I, I think, you know, I'm wandering around the street and people are like, hey, you there. If I, if I made a bunch of bubble objects in a canvas in the browser, can you imagine if this actually happened to be on the street? <laughs> um, and I want to like interact with them with the mouse individually. Like how would I know if the mouse is hovering over one versus the other? How would I deal with that? Well, interesting, a little bit of an aside first before. So this is what I want to implement in this video. Um, how, can you as, uh, how can you have the user interact with individual objects? Um, so how do I set up the code to make that happen? How does this work? So here's the thing. What eventually, if you're watching all of these videos in the order that they are, there's going to be a time in the future. I actually recorded these videos in the past, but for you it will be the future where I will add things below the canvas, like there'll be a button here or like a box with text in it. And the canvas is actually one of those things too. On this page is a canvas. I could put other things on this page. Everything on a web, web page can register events. It can register this event of like a click on that's not really an event, or a mouse over, right? I, and, and there's all sorts of fancy ways in JavaScript and in P5.js to handle all these different types of events to know how users are interacting with things. But this thing here, this thing here is one thing, the canvas. The only thing that P5.js knows is if you're clicking on the canvas or not. And actually, to be honest, even if you click off the canvas, it's going to make one kind of like in its mind off the canvas that might wander on, which you just saw happen. Um, because I'm using this global mouse pressed event. I have an event, it's just press the mouse anywhere. But what if I want to have an event that's like only when I click on this circle? So because these aren't separate, the circles are my own invention, they're pixels that I've drawn in their space, it's up to me as the programmer, the, the person who designed this sketch, to figure out how to handle that. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do in this video. So let me think about what would make sense. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this sketch a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this mouse pressed function. I mean, I'm, I'm going to come back to it. But in, in setup, I'm going to say, like, let x equal random width, let y equal random height, let r equal random uh, 10 comma 50, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to just make this new bubble. I'm going to take this exact code from the bottom. You're over there. I'm like, <laughs> never know where to look. One of these days I'll figure it out. Take this exact code from the bottom, and I'm going to make a new bubble. All right, so actually, let's do this first. Let's just pretend we only have one. Let's go, let's peel away from the array for a second and let's simplify our lives. And let's, I'm just gonna make a single bubble object. And that's gonna be it. And forget about this array, just for a little bit. And so I'll come back to the array eventually. Now notice that this, the, I'm not changing this bubble class at all. It's still the same thing. What, all right, where is it? Ah, oh, but I do need to say <laughs> that individual bubble move bubble.show. So you might, let's so what I want to do is I want to have something to happen when I click on that bubble. So your first instinct might be, aha, well, there's this mouse pressed function that I can write out here. Oh, ah, look at this. I wrote this nice mouse press function right out here. Yay! So why not, why not, there's this bubble class that I've been learning all about to write. I'll just do, I know, let's just do this. Console log clicked on bubble, right? Won't that work? That'll work. Oh, I'm so excited. Ooh, this is gonna work. <laughs> click, click, click. I can click on the bubble. Oh, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. So I've sent you in the completely wrong direction, although the instinct is kind of right. Yeah, I, this is like a function that's just out in the wild. It's global, so it's for any mouse pressed. This is a function that's inside of the bubble, so eh, it's fine. But here's the thing. This, this function mouse pressed is a special function that P5 recognizes, just like set up and draw are special functions that P5 recognizes. P5 is not going to go inside of these new classes that you write and somehow recognize that you have a mouse press function, know where the object is, figure out it's, this is not part of its capability. It wouldn't, I don't even know how it could even be capable of that. But there isn't any reason why I couldn't write a function. And you know, it's a little bit problematic for me to call it mouse pressed. So maybe I'm just going to call it like, uh, 
let's just call it like a clicked for right now. Um, there's no reason why I couldn't inside of the mouse pressed function say, hey, whenever the user clicks the mouse, I know that globally, why don't I just call another a function inside any of my objects that need to handle that click. So I'm going to say bubble.clicked. So now, look at this, it's going to work, oh, let's get a bigger one. It's going to work. Okay, I'm going to click on it, click on it, ah, look, I clicked on the bubble. Look, let me do it again. Oh, I clicked on the bubble three times. I'm going to click out over here now, six times, seven times, eight. So here's the thing. Remember, this is a global mouse pressed. So I can call my function on this bubble object, <laughs> but it's just going to do this every single time. It's up to me to write some code to figure out wherever, wherever I click the mouse. I know where the bubble is and I know how big it is. Um, this dot, no, if you know the X, the Y, and the R, we can write some code. So I could say something like, hmm, if, okay, well how do, okay, so here's, here's, here's a little bit of a moment here. Let's say what I, well, one of the things I need to figure out, and I've probably done this in other videos, but this seems like a nice time to, to talk it through, is if I have a circle, how do I know if a point is inside the circle or is outside the circle? Because what I'm trying to do is figure out is the mouse, that's the mouse arrow, did it, did it click inside or out, outside or inside the circle? I could ask the same question for a square. I could ask that question for a triangle. I could ask that question for some arbitrary, strangely shaped polygon. And all of these are gonna get progressively more complex. The square and the circle are pretty, rectangle and a circle are pretty easy to do. This is much harder, but all of this is possible. The point is I need to write some code to figure that out. That code needs to go here. Did, wherever that mouse is, is it actually related to where this.x, this.y, this.r are? So how do I do that? So one of the nice things that um, P5 and both processing, if you were using that instead, have is a function called dist, which stands for distance. And I can give that function two points, arbitrarily x1, y1, x2, y2. So if I make one of those points the center of the circle, maybe I'll call that cx, cy, and then the other point uh, over here, for example, is the mouse, where the mouse clicked, we'll call that mx, my. I could pass these values into that distance function and get the length of this line, call that d. Something that I happen to know from my code, oops, wrong button, is r, the radius of the circle. Now, am I actually using it as the radius? I am. Because remember, the ellipse function itself wants the diameter, so r really means the radius, which is half of the diameter. What do I mean by that? So I happen to know this dot r is this distance, or another way of looking at it, it's this distance right here. So, Guess what? This is probably popping into your head just about now. If the distance between the center and the mouse is greater than the radius, then that point is outside the circle. If it's less than the radius, then that point is inside the circle. <laughs> okay, so now we can come over here and I could start to add that code. I can say, let me find the distance between mouse x, mouse y, and this dot x, and this dot y. And I can now say if d, now this is not this dot d because this is a local variable that I'm using just to calculate for at this moment the distance is less than this dot r, then console log clicked on bubble. Now we're really getting somewhere. Okay, so th this is a moment of success, and that was really loud. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to ruin this video. Um, so what I've now successfully done is I'm able to determine and only print out this statement. So what's the full story here? This is where I know that the mouse has been pressed anywhere. So it's up to me to now to say like, well, if the mouse is pressed anywhere, let's check if the mouse is pressed for this bubble. And guess what? Let's go back to the array now. Let's put this array back. Let's uh, make this a single bubble. Let's put that into the array. And now this loop here, just like in draw when I want to move and show everything, there's no reason why I couldn't when I click the mouse, use that same exact loop and just call clicked 
on all the bubbles that are in that array. So let's see if this works. Oops, okay, I have some error. Bubble is not defined at draw, so I forgot that I still have this old individual bubble that I don't need anymore. So I can click on it, it worked. I can click outside, I don't see anything. Um, let's, let's actually add now. Let's do this five times in setup. So I'm gonna add five bubbles. And now in theory, it's, we're getting that message if I click on any of them. But here's the thing, I really want something to happen. <laughs> so I could change its color. Let's, let's actually, here's the thing. What if, I, what if I were to just hover over these bubbles? And I wanted to change their color if I were to hover over the bubbles. And then have something when I, so, oh, oh actually, you know what? <laughs> Hold on, there's another important point that I want to make. I don't, there's something about this function that I don't really like. And yes, I'm gonna do this from time to time and you will too and it's okay. But right there, I don't love the fact that I'm using mouse X and mouse Y. Those are global variables. In theory, I want my bubble class to only know about itself. It doesn't really need to know about the outside world. It doesn't have to know it's on a canvas, that there's a mouse. And in theory, what I want to be able to do is write a generic bubble class that I could say, hey, is the mouse clicking on you? Or is this other sensor over top of this other object? at the same location as you, or you know, I switch it to using like a connect to track my hand. Is my hand location near this bubble? So really what would make more sense is for me to actually put arguments into the clicked function. And again, I'm doing this sort of awful thing where I'm giving them the same name as arguments in, as, as, sorry, as properties of the class itself. I'm giving these parameters x and y the same name as this.x, this.y, but JavaScript is very good at distinguishing because these, this x and y are the ones that are coming in through the parameters, and these here are the properties, this dot of the object itself. But maybe if I want it to be like a little less confusing about it, I might say like px, py for like pixel x or pixel y or something like that. Um, and so now what makes more sense is what I really want to do is pass in mouse x, mouse y. Because what I want to do when the mouse is pressed is ask, does this point, and really I might do something like contains or inside or it includes, like so I could name that function in some other way because really what I'm asking is, is that, um, is, that, is that point inside that object? So interestingly enough, what I could do is let's, let's give the bubbles a color. Uh, I'm gonna give it like a brightness and make it uh, zero. And I'm going to say uh, fill this dot brightness and I'll give it some alpha. And then what I'm gonna do is when I've clicked on them, I am going to say this dot brightness equals uh, 255. So the idea here is that now bubbles each have a new property, a color. It starts at zero. And anytime I click on one of them, I turn that one a different color. So what's really nice about this is I have one function, one function that's part of the class. And I could use that function in any way that I want. It just all that function does is test if any generic point is inside a given object. And if it is, uh, if it is inside that, if it, sorry, inside, an inside that shape, the geometry of that object, if it is, I change its color. And the way I happen to be using it is by saying, hey, whenever the user clicks the mouse anywhere, let's go check all the objects in our array and see if the mouse is inside them. So, all right, I think this ends this particular video. I need to do something where I, um, one thing I would really actually like to do, um, oh, so what, you, you, should, you should do an exercise here. So if you're watching this, um, try to make it do something different if you hover over the, um, the bubble, change the bubble to a rectangle, see if you can make the same thing work with a rectangle. Um, allow yourself to click on it twice, turn it on and off, that's something you could try. Um, and um, have a different behavior for when you click on it versus when you just mouse over it, those types of things. But what I wanna do, something that I wanna do, and I, maybe I'll do it in the next video, is when I click on each one of these, I remove them from, um, from the world. So I can, I can add bubbles and, and delete them somehow. So we have to look at how to delete things from an array. Okay, see you in the next video, perhaps, <laughs> maybe. Okay, goodbye.